Hallelujah. Thank you. Let us be seated. God bless you. We've already had a great time of worship in songs by our brother. Thank you so much. Um, if anybody is in the spirit, he will know that indeed we have been taken into the presence of God. And whatever is left of this service becomes simpler because of what our brother has done. Uh, we need to appreciate that. We also need to appreciate every one of us that are so responsive to the Spirit of God uh, because as he was leading the songs and the hymns, we were flowing with him. And so many of us were on our face down. And that uh, is a sign. I was also acknowledging this to the pastor when we talked earlier in the day that we have a church that is very spiritually responsive. And it's not taking us time to wind you, to motivate you, to sing, to pray. And that tells me that this is a living church. I'm reading from Luke chapter 5. Victory at last. And this night especially, we're looking at what victory comes to us through his word. Luke chapter 5. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said to him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. You see, we are back at the issue of help. May you find help. Yesterday, we spoke briefly about it and it's like it's coming up again. And why? Because one of the marks of this meeting is that at the end of this meeting you will find help. Amen. Wherever you turn, you find help. Amen. Help will find you. People will beckon to you to come and receive help. People will phone you to come and receive help. And yesterday we were seeing three levels of help. A waiting help. A following help. And now if Moses lived with Jethro for 40 years. If a man help you for 40 years If a man help you for 40 years, uh -uh. 
Take 40 out of the life of a man. If a man help you for 40 years, even as you are now, if somebody help you for 40 years, by the time Moses was leaving Jethro's house, Jethro's daughters were now married. So they too, those men that were husbands to those ladies could as well take Moses. So Moses could go. And they were not going to feel it. May God bring you a helper yeah. that will help you till you enter express road. Yeah. Say amen three times. The role of helpers. Now the Bible says that they were going to sink. If these helpers didn't come, they will sink. If they sink, pastor, all the fish they caught will be back. May you find help. Help that will last. That's not where we're going. We branched there. But you see, it came up again. That's why we're talking about it. And if I don't do that, I may miss it. They beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other sheep, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the sheep so that they began to sing. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Depart from me. For I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished. And all that were with him at the drought of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Fear not, for henceforth thou shalt catch men. Lord Almighty, I pray tonight that we will be catching in hierarchies and categories from fish to men. Your catching will be in an ascending order. The quality will be in ascending order. The quantity will not be small. In Jesus name. The misery of. Peter. And co. Toiling. And catching nothing. It's not normal. These were senior fishermen. Only senior fishermen. Fish at night. Because of uh, the usual, uh, all the fears we have about ghosts, about mami water. <laughs> Besides, the Bible says this was a lake. You don't catch fish all night in a lake and catch nothing. If it was a flowing river in which we, the, the, we have the upper side, we have the down, downstream, we are likely to come up with some explanation that perhaps some of the fish have gone either downstream or they have gone upstream. Lake. I think I passed geography. That a lake is a body of water surrounded. Uh -huh. I, I passed geography. A lake is a body of water surrounded by land. It's not flowing. All the fish are inside. They're going nowhere. You see, the misery of Peter catching nothing is the fact that there is, there is the 
spirit of nothingness. <laughs> Virus. <laughs> I, remind, I, I remember I spoke to you some time ago about a situation I met in LA. This brother that wrote to IX seven times, you remember? Oh, you forgot. He, 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 you forgot. He wrote YX seven times and failed seven times. There is a failure that is uh, even uh, the Omoluabi failure. There is another failure. You see, when you have F9, you know there's no F10. When you have F, that's, that's the end. This one, every year, will have F9, F9 in every subject. Aggregate 54. Now, the father went and hired a lesson teacher for him. Still, he failed everything. The father told him that Wayek is hard, that he should do Neko. Neko is a junior principality. He went and wrote Neko. And it's the same thing. One year, the father told him to rest. Rest. Because we don't know. You need rest. So that year, he didn't do Wayek and he didn't do Neku. Yet, Wayek sent him result. I read the newspapers, listen. I read the newspapers, people say, Wayek sent my result, that is result withheld. This one did not do Wayek, he didn't do Neko. Yet, Wayek sent him result. That is to say, whether you write it or you don't write it, this is your result. If your father like, let him hire a professor to lecture you. This is your result. They have already put his name inside computer in Mina in the headquarters of Wayek and then put the result. So when the press is named like this, res automatic result come out. There are people, we are laughing, there are people, no matter what they do, it's a programmed result. It's a programmed report, a result. That's the reason why a lot of people are going nowhere. They try, they try, they try, not for want of effort. Not because they are lazy. Okay? This brother entered the meeting and held his head with two hands and shouted in Yoruba, that is, oh Lord, I don't know how to do it again. And that year, he made A in all the results. This nothing. <laughs> Elijah was praying on Mount Carmel and sent his servant go and look to see whether there is rain forming in the sky. The boy came back seven times and said there's nothing. He said nothing brother. You find people that are nothing. May you have nothing to do with them. If you go and join business with nothing, brother, you get nothing. Zero is the only figure that you multiply anything with it and it's still zero. It's the only figure you multiply anything with it. What do you get? Nothing. This night, because the Bible, you see, we are talking about solution night. This fellow said they toil all night, isn't it? 
You see, this is a night when your toil will be over. <laughs> this is the night when your suffering will be over. This is the night when your pain will be over. This is the night when the zero factor in your life will be over. This is the night. This is the night. They said we tried all night. We, we are in a great place tonight. They said they tried all night. And we are talking of solution night. These fellows have no solution. How could you, all of you, a whole team of fishermen be fishing in a lake and catch nothing? It's not normal. Because the fish have nowhere to escape to. But how each time the fish come in contact with these people's net, the fish know how to withdraw. The fish, fish became wiser than the fishermen. It's an understatement when we say they caught nothing. They didn't catch nothing. They catch it dirty. <laughs> because what the Bible says is that they were washing their nets. Each time they throw the net in, the net go and gather Dirty. When they pull the net, the net feels heavy in hand. That's a deceit. Now, when they draw it, they think they're drawing fish. They're not drawing fish. You are drawing dirty. And you never know what you are drawing till you bring it to land. And a lot of people are walking, but they are using their body to collect filthy things. Promise them a job and say, if I sleep with you, I give you a job. You sleep with him, he doesn't give you a job. And everywhere you have gathered filth for labor and you are harvesting mess for your effort. <laughs> And you are harvesting depth for your effort. Can you imagine a prophet in 2 Kings chapter 4 did all the prophecy in his life and died in depth? He used to prophesy and give predictive sentences that will happen instantly. He died in depth. The nothing virus that is an evil reversal in your life. You are in a good place tonight. Because it will be taken away. It's an understatement to say that Peter was not catching fish. He was throwing net in to catch fish. He was bringing deaths out of the floor of the lake. That was not what he came for. But that's what he was getting. This is an evil reversal. And the nemesis that needed to be taken away. That what he's working for is not what he's getting. <laughs> the hand of Esau. Walk for Rachel. Get Leah. Jacob did not set out in his life to be a polygamist. It was Laban that messed his life up. Walk for Rachel. They gave him Leah. And he said he still wanted Rachel. And the man said, It's all right. Where did you start, stop uh, labor at the other time? Come and carry home and finish from here. Jacob is the only one in the Bible that did labor for 14 years to marry. (laughs) 
Women, I beg, no verse for me. You know hard like that. 14 years out of the life of a man. How much is remaining? You use 14 years to do labor to marry. Walk for something. Get another thing. <laughs> because <laughs> when the father felt his hand and saw that he had gone to carry the garment of Esau and wear it to cover because he wanted the blessing instead of Esau. The father said, this hand is the hand of Esau. You know the hand of Esau? Esau doesn't get what he worked for. Esau will go and kill animals so that he will get blessing. He doesn't get it. The father had already said, this hand is the hand of Esau. And you said you are Esau. He said yes. You are you Esau. He said yes. <laughs> the day an angel met him and he was going to get blessed. It's not that the angel didn't know his name. The angel tried to trace his record back and said, you know where you missed it. What's your name? What's your name? If you like, call yourself Esau again. God will touch you at the point of correction. Say louder, amen. Casting net into a sea to catch fish. No fish. He carried it. And they did that the whole night. Not even by mistake catch one crayfish. <laughs> so they were washing their nets. At the place where they were washing their nets. I can imagine the frustration. I can imagine the despondency of washing their nets. Maybe they, when they were going for fishing last night, Peter possibly told somebody, I said, when I'm back in the morning, come and collect money. One day, a man came and prayed, said he was going to Germany to perform. He needed visa, so I prayed for him and his team, and they went. When they came back, he called me, he said he wants to go and come and do Thanksgiving, that he performed in Berlin. He performed in Frankfurt. People were lining up outside and pay money that he wants to come and do Thanksgiving. I said, okay, come by two o'clock. Before two, I was in the office. You know why? You don't know why. <laughs> then I called the printer that printed posters for me for crusade, handbills for me for crusade on credit. I said, if you come, that the thing has, 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 has landed. That one came at one o'clock. So we sat. It wasn't long. The man entered. <laughs> then he started. He said he performed in Berlin. He performed in France. I said, I've heard all that on phone. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I've had all that on phone. That <laughs> you say you want to do that. You say yes. And that's what we're waiting for. So he put his hand in his pocket. I thought he was bringing out money. He brought out a biro on which they wrote Berlin 96. He said, That's the Thanksgiving that he has got. Berlin 96. I stood up. My eye turned. I sat. 
I quickly sat back again. <laughs> so I told him, I said, oh God, go, I beg, just go. So as I was seeing him off, the printer rushed in and said, how far? I said, see, my room, my little. <laughs> The Bible says, Woe unto him that put his trust in a man. The Bible says, They that put their trust in the Lord shall not be ashamed. Chances were that Peter would possibly have told somebody. We are going to fish this now. Come in the morning, you take your money. Now, when they came back in the morning, there is nothing to sell. And they were washing their nets. The frustration and the pondency, you can better imagine. But thereupon, Jesus arrived. Again, something that is not normal here was that Jesus was going to do a crusade by the seaside. That is not the best place to do crusade. <laughs> You possibly don't know that the Lord has been monitoring your failure. You possibly don't know that the Lord has been monitoring your disappointment. And just at the point where you are going to start to apologize to those you are owing money, the Lord will show up. Just at the point where you are going to be put in a shame and disgrace, the Lord will show up. Just as it is not normal for people to fish in a lake all night and catch nothing, it's not normal to choose a seaside for a crusade ground. Because you could see, the Bible says that as people were pressing on Jesus, they were going to push him into water. Why do you choose that kind of venue for a crusade? He came for Peter. He came for Peter. So, he entered Peter's ship. And possibly then told Peter, could you leave what you are doing and come over here? Could you leave the different Sorting your sorting filth all around. Could you please leave that and come over here? As the Lord will be inviting people away from their mess tonight. Are you coming? Yes, sir. Could you leave what you are doing, Peter, and come over here? Leave this filth stuff. It takes Peter believing that this invitation is worth complying with and leave certain outfits and come by here. And Jesus sat in his boat, this failed boat. If they were going to form failed businessmen association, Peter should possibly be the chairman. This is a failed boat that went to catch fish and brought dirty things back home. But give it to Jesus. Give that mess to Jesus. Give that nonsense to Jesus. He knows what to do with it. Using Peter's boat for a platform. As a pulpit. That woodwork became a podium to preach. And after he had dismissed the crowd, he told Peter, thank you very much. Could you please push back a little bit into the center of the lake and cast down your nets? Peter said, we have done this several times over throughout the night. The way he put it, he said, we have toiled. Now, what made it a toil? You see, if Peter caught plenty of fish overnight, 
He will not call it toil. Uh, it was the failure that made the effort to be toil. The same effort that caught fish, if it caught fish, caught fish, caught fish, caught fish all night, and Jesus was discussing this same process with him, he will not call it toil. He will say, ah, we thank God the whole night we threw that, we cut this, we cut that. He will not call it toil. What made it toil was the failure. God will take toil out of your labor. God will take toil out of your effort. And the reason will be because you will now have something to show for your effort. You will have something to show for your prayer. You will have something to show for your Christianity. Raise your hand and shout hallelujah. You know what Peter said? Peter said, I wouldn't have done it, but because of your word. Because of your word. The power in the word was now being deployed. If Peter decided not to obey, the fish will remain in the sea. And he will continue to wash his net. Complete compliance is called for. Not obedience by a fraction. When the Lord asked him to cast in the net, he said he will cast in the net. And he threw one net instead of nets. Yet, the faithfulness of God remained that the allocation God had prepared for the nets was given to the net. So it broke. Your unbelief does not diminish God's plan. Your incapacity does not reduce God's faithfulness. What he has planned to do for you, he will do for you. What he has planned to do for you, he will do for you. When God has decided to heal you, he will heal you. When God has decided to bless you, he will bless you. Your incapacity will not reduce the faithfulness of God. The allocation for the nets was given to the net. So it broke. And the Bible says, now the first thing to wonder at is that, are these fishes from this same lake? Yeah. <laughs> the reason is because the Lord is now the one in charge. When you allow the Lord to be in charge, you catch what you cannot on your own and by your wisdom catch. Because the Lord knows the terrain more than you do. The Lord knows the road more than you do. The Lord knows where it is, what you are looking for. The Lord knows how to bring it over to you. One single effort. I don't know how many times Peter threw the net in overnight. One single effort. I don't know how many times he put it in, put it in, and caught nothing, but one single effort. And this is my prayer for somebody here, that one single effort. There is an acceleration that is a compensation. There is a move of God in a man's life that is to pay arrears. There is something God will do for you, and it will just pay for all the wasted efforts. All the wasted years God will compensate. The years that the locusts have eaten, the caterpillars and the palmer worms, God will restore. The wasted time, God will restore. The God of all time will restore. He will restore your strength. He will restore your hope. He will restore your time. That's a friend of mine. He's a judge now in Kogi State. He didn't marry on time. And after they married, they had no child. So we began to, I preached the wedding. So we began to pray. 
I said, this that you don't nearly old finish before you marry. Now, you marry again, and you are still awaiting result. I said, how we for do? So I said, God help us. Then he started to burn, pastor. He burned one time, burned two. Burned second time, burned two. Burned third time, burned and born three times, half a dozen children don't fool myself. <laughs> there is an acceleration that is a compensation. I don't jam English. There is an acceleration that is a There is an acceleration that you will get that will become compensation for the years and the times that you have wasted. Say amen three times. I'd like to advise you. The Bible says they began to sink. <laughs> Please don't sink. Are you hearing me? This is a blessing. Blessing can sink people. Prosperity can sink people. Look at Solomon. A, a brother marrying 1,000 women. A brother, an anointed brother. If he was poor, he would not do it. Prosperity can sink you. When they were writing the names of heroes in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, Solomon's name was omitted. And I said to myself, ah, with all that money, with all that wisdom, what wisdom is there in marrying 1,000 women? That wisdom had picked the virus. They were putting Gideon's name. They were putting Samson's name. Even Samson. Even brother Samson. That they commanded. They commanded to her. Solomon. Hey. <laughs> He died blind. They put his name. Solomon's name was not put. After building a temple for God, Solomon also began to build temples for idols towards the end of his life. Prosperity can sink a man. Blessings can sink. Some of you are still coming to church and coming to night vigil now because you need divine intervention. After God has intervened, will you still come? After you have become, will you still come? After you have arrived, will you still come? A catch was making them to sink. It's important we tell you this before you get there. So that it will not be that we are phoning you and it is another person that is first of all carry your phone. This same you. If you have seen the things that I have seen, the people we have prayed for and what they become and how that after they became, we, what they, we can't even see them again. I am not, he who used to line up in front of my office to come in to pray, I, he is now expecting me to come and line up in front of his office. 
in a four year tenor. One of them said recently that the worst thing that has happened to him is not that he lost election, but that the worst thing that has happened to him is that since they announced the result, the phone no more ring. This phone that was given to a PA no longer ring. If you have seen what people like us have seen, I was sharing with your pastor. This year is the 40th year that I have been preaching. If you have seen the things I have seen over 40 years, you will listen to the voice of an elder. Don't sink. You hear? At thy word, I will cast out. I'll cast down the net. You see, the respect for the word. We saw this in the centurion who came to Jesus and said, could you please come to my house and heal my servant? And Jesus was heading to the house. Then he stopped and said, could you please say a word only? That's the belief, the investment of a man's faith in the word. He said, speak a word only and my servant will be healed. Say it here. He will be healed there. And the Lord wondered at the faith of this centurion. He was not a Jew, he's a Roman. That how come you have this type of faith? Can somebody generate an unusual faith? The centurion was not a Jew. How did he come? Well, he took his faith at the, from the backdrop of the kind of job he does. He said, I'm a soldier. When I said to a, a man, go, he goes. When I say to him, come, he comes. If it can happen to me, mortal, I know if you say a word, thou creator of heaven and earth, it will happen the way you say it. And Jesus said, how come you have this faith? You are a Roman. Can somebody generate an unusual faith to believe the word of God against his pain? Believe the word of God against your feeling. Your feeling is a liar. You are feeling against God. God's word is above how you feel. God's word is not about how you feel. God's word controls the universe. He made the heavens. He made the angels. He promised Abraham he fulfilled it. He promised Isaac he fulfilled it. He promised Jacob he fulfilled it. He promised the prophets he fulfilled it. God is believable. You can believe God. You can generate a faith contrary to the way you feel. In one hospital in a learning pastor, we are going to pray now. One man was so sick and they were putting using spoon to carry pap into his mouth. Sorry, you get well. He said, Yes, by the grace of God. Open your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Then they put it on. Some of the pap, yeah, they use spoon to, <laughs> to hear myself. One woman in the next bed was using. Ring boiler. I don't know whether you still remember ring boiler in America. No, in America, you don't know anything. You, you use kettle. And was using ring boiler to... A boiling ring, thank you, sir. To boil water. That one was boiling near the bed and was making fumes, water vapor, to come up. Then another person said... Fire! He thought the water vapor was fire. Fire! The man they are using spoon. Oh, data. He has reached outside. 
before the person that was putting a He went away with drip. <laughs> oh, but drip will lost. The question is, where did he find strength? Is inside him. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I don't need to say fire for you to believe. Let me shout Jesus and you believe. Let me shout the blood of Jesus and you believe. Rise up on your feet and say Jesus. You can walk out your miracle tonight because the power is in you. The faith is in you. But that's the way you go about it. I have a professor of medicine in my church. He's a deacon. He studied in Ukraine. He entered the world in University of Illinois Teaching Hospital. His own patient, you know, everybody, the consultants have their patients. He was going to his own patient. Another woman that was not his patient shouted, Doctor, I don't die finish up. Then my member said, if you die finish and you are still shouting like this, you never die finish. My member continued to his patient. <laughs> the woman started again. Doctor, I don't die finish. Then my 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 deacon decided that because it's already disturbing the whole world. And everybody has heard. So he went and calmed her. It's not, it's, not, it's not his patient, but he knew enough to calm her down. And then call, look at the consultant's name on the bed and call the person, his colleague. I bet this person needs quick attention. Could you please come? While he was doing that, Pastor, his own patient was telling the other patients, around that. That's my doctor. When he finished from that side, they will come to this side. Doctor, I have to stop. My member finished with this. By the time he got here, the man here has died. When they finish from that side, they will come to this side. They make it. Somebody shout. Death had entered the world. I was going to claim somebody. This one was at the verge and screamed and was speared. Then death left him. Would you like to shout? And now I, I said to myself, if I was this one, because he came for me. So if this one say he don't die, finish me, I say, I don't die, finish, 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 finish. Uh, he said, that's the way he said, the way he finished from that side, then he's gonna to come to this side. That's if he needs to. Raise your hand and say, Father! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say Father, say Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, do a miracle tonight. Open your mouth and pray to Jesus. Really, I
It's my turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. Receive a miracle. Receive a miracle. Receive a miracle tonight. Jesus name we pray raise your hand and say father every evil reversal every evil reversal I cancel it I cancel it in the name of Jesus open your mouth and pray to Jesus we are in a miracle service Hey, <laughs> Cancel it, cancel it, cancel it, cancel it. How are you working for something? You are getting another thing. You want to catch fish, you carry it dirty. Why are you working for one thing and you catch another thing? No, 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 no. I reject it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. A miracle is happening about acceleration. There is an acceleration that will be a compensation. Are you hearing the word of God here tonight? There is a fast forwarding. There is a fast tracking that will become a compensation. Somebody will be compensated. You will get married this year. You will even still have a baby in the next one year. Before we have another solution conference, you will carry your child. You will get a miracle that has been long standing. Raise your hand and say, Father, acceleration for compensation open your mouth and ask for yeah. you will marry this year you will marry this year. You will marry this year. Between now and the next convention, you will carry a baby. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Ku 